the record is on. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the first webinar for fall 2020. We're starting our CRED webinar series with, a, with an interesting topic um, that tackles the future and the technology in the future of architecture and also the future of other majors. Um, let me start with introducing, after welcoming you back, let me start with introducing our guests for, guests for today. I'll start with um, Daniel Kayat, who is the head of product in the HTC Middle East and, and Africa. Daniel has um, has be, been a pioneer with HTC and Vive in the fields of Pi, Tech, and XR with experience in supporting organizations implementing new technologies to improve their businesses and customers' experience. A highly motivated individual, Daniel is hitting the um, product function for HTC in the Middle East and Africa, working with product marketing and engineers and technical account managers, as well as regional product um, trainers. He works closely with telecom operators and partners across the region championing their needs while ensuring they're driven within the um, HTC. With more than 18 experience along a great passion for technology, uh, he developed effective interface with regional customers. Daniel was also involved in developing customer electronics products from smartphones to routers to virtual reality headsets, as well as software related solutions. Um, that's a little bit of Daniel's background. I'm sure we are getting to know more Daniel through the presentation. So thank you, Daniel, for joining us. I'm looking forward for your talk. And let me also introduce our second guest for today, Michael Nagib, who is a senior architect at the Middle East and North Africa studio of LWK and partners. He has over 16 years of hand, hands-on experience in 3D modeling, animation, creative media solutions. He designed and contributed to the vibrant architecture scene in the Emirates, including Dubai and Abu Dhabi, several, designing several landmarks. Michael is passionate about knowledge, of ex knowledge exchange. His skills include architectural design, filmmaking, virtual reality, and 3D work through and part through architectural animation, which were displayed a number of occasions um, and real estate exhibitions. As an experienced concept architect, he crafted he, he uh, crafted the world meaning proposal alongside being a director and editor for several shorts and co corporate films. He uh, debuted his award-winning film titled Samaka in the uh, 2012 Abu Dhabi International Film Festival. Across his career, he developed innovative virtual reality solutions for architects, interior designers, developers. Um, as you can see, and as I have briefly introduced our two guests, we are looking forward to for an interesting um, talk, kicking off the series of grid webinars for fall 2021. So uh, for, from my side, I have one point to remind you uh, for, please, if you have any questions, just type the, your questions in the uh, Q&A section, or you can send your question privately to me, and I'll be directing all of these questions to, the, to the, our guests for today. That's all from my side uh, for now. Um, Daniel, Michael, the stage is yours, so we're looking forward thank to it. Thank you for the introduction, um, and thank you for the Center for Research and Innovation and Design at uh, the American University of Dubai. I mean, big shout to Dr. George also, who invited us to be part of this uh, um, interesting webinar. Uh, we're very excited to talk um, about virtual reality and how it's shaping our world, and also very proud to work closely with the American University of Dubai to make virtual reality part of their architecture and design lab and get the students um, uh, up to speed with the latest technology in order to uh, study, design, uh, develop, and create um, innovative um, experiences to their uh, future customers one day uh, and throughout their architecture projects by using the technology of virtual reality. Um, allow me to share my screen and I can start talking about a few uh, elements, uh, how we are shaping today uh, and virtual reality, how is it helping uh, the technology.
Mm, you can see my screen. Uh, it is split. Uh, we have to make it yes full, please. Uh, better now? Yeah, it's perfect now. Excellent, excellent. So to start with, um, since 2016, um, HTC Vive. Ah, has sorry, been uh, sorry, Daniel. Daniel, it is showing a portion of the screen, not the full one. I'm sorry, it's not showing a full screen. It's showing portion of it. So it's like the the image is cropped. Okay, one second. I have to tell you, I, I like your background. It's very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let me try now. Um, what about now? Uh, st still split now. It's split. Uh, it's split. It's, uh, it's, it's partial or do you mean split? No, now, now it's split for two screens. It splits with two screens. What about now? What about now? No, still. Okay, let me try to share my full screen. Okay. What about now? Yes, now it's complete, it's full. Uh, yeah, we, we just have a gray, small gray box. Yeah, perfect, now it's perfect. Uh, the gray box was just mentioning that there's- Yes, yes, now can... it's perfect, no, no, no issues. Okay. Just let me fix my camera. What's good now? Yeah. So go okay. ahead. Okay. So since 2016, um, HTC Vive has been leading in the adoption um, and use of virtual uh, reality products. And as you remember, HTC was in the smartphone business, and then now, uh, bit and bit, we grew the virtual reality um, sector. And all it started with gaming and uh, consumers sitting at home uh, playing some nice 360 experiences. However, we've expanded this area of the business, and now we are into the enterprise. And today, we are going to talk a little bit about what products and what features within those products are useful to architecture design and visualization and uh, the challenges that are faced uh, by today's world whether it's software and hardware how we are scaling it in order to um, answer educational institutions um, higher technology institutions and most importantly uh, the enterprise um, uh, sector uh, to start with um, i'm going to give you just a quick um, a brief about the uh, different uh, uh, hardware when it comes to virtual reality. And the, these are three categories. We call them the first one, the AIO, which is called the all-in-one. When we talk about an all-in-one headset, we talk about all the processing capabilities, the power, the battery, um, everything, uh, the tracking, everything is built in within this um, headset. It's powered by a, a, a processor, a chipset that uh, gives all the graphical uh, processing interface to the experience and the built-in battery will last depending on the usage of the headset. The second category is the uh, what we call them the Steam VR devices where they focus on precision, external object tracking, motion capture, eye tracking, all this together where we still need a PC in order to run this virtual reality experience. And we need those trackers and the base stations and laser objects around the uh, headset in order to give a room scale experience where people can um, interact and can have their final design displayed and showcased to um, the, the target audience. <coughs> so the last category is the ones that are part of the PCVR uh, where uh, those architects or those designers are going from a meeting to another, from an area to another, where they don't have the time and even the space uh, to uh, install and set up, and they need everything to be inside out tracking, similar to what, what we've seen on, uh, on the third part with what we call the Vive Cosmos series. And there uh, you have all the tracking within the headset, with the, thanks to six cameras around, uh, scanning the space around you and give you the uh, experience all of it. Um, not to forget when we 
when we work, work with the enterprises, education institutions, we're not sitting at home. We're not having someone uh, at the comfort of, uh, of our room and just providing a, a headset with a nice game experience. Uh, although gamers are the ones who push the boundaries, but now when we talk about the enterprise, we talk about uh, multiple users uh, using the experience. I can I remember when I visited the, your uh, your lab at AUD, there are multiple students who will be using the headset. So we have to find identify a headset that can be easily cleaned and sanitized. Uh, comfort, especially in design, is extremely important. We don't want to have a um, headset that's super heavy, a headset that's not really spreading the weight across uh, because people would at least use it for one, one and a half hours. We need durable and reliable headsets so for people to really um, enjoy an experience and really um, have it uh, set up in one place uh, where um, enterprises are really making the most out of the hardware. And when it comes to um, information technology and security, we need to be um, um, taking this into highly consideration uh, because it's a work environment, it's a design house, it's a, uh, it's a virtual studio, uh, it's a 3D engine. All these needs to be taken into consideration. And finally, uh, any support that's required, you have to be working with um, a company that takes it into consideration. A little bit about um, global customers glo um, uh, that, that we cater, just to give you an idea that in the area of design and visualization, uh, we've covered uh, many uh, and other, other areas that we've covered, whether it's healthcare, education, military, retail training, and aerospace. But to better understand um, uh, our enterprise customers, whether it's today or in the future, uh, uh, there are categories, but mostly the categories that are uh, being the areas of focus is the area of design and visualization. And this is the area that's most important for today's session where uh, people collaborate, whether uh, they are in a single or multiplayer experiences. I give you an example, a design house with uh, architects or designers around the world. They don't need to group and set and sit in one place every time they want to work about their product design and, uh, and new experiences. So they need a virtual reality system where they can go all together as a multiplayer VR group and they can contribute all together to the same uh, uh, virtual reality concept they have uh, they have done this will give them much more productivity they will be able to showcase those designs to their teams to their management to their clients in order to really uh, prioritize and simulate physical reality into virtual reality this is an extremely important factor um, it requires um, um, high-end capability of virtual reality, and we've worked with uh, uh, big clients around the world, uh, similar to the one that you've seen, um, just uh, pushing the boundaries using a headset that I'm going to talk about it today. Uh, my aim today is not to basically about um, a specific model um, of the headset, although the model is um, the number one related to virtual reality, but most importantly, I want to show you the features and the uh, specifications that are really um, important for uh, design for architecture. And these are the things that are changing today's world. Uh, when it comes to visuals, if we don't push the boundaries to the maximum, we won't give what we call immersion. And immersion in design and, uh, and visualization, or even in architecture, it gives you the proper depth, it gives you the proper elements when you are in this in this virtual space, um, unlike when you are um, not having the perfect uh, visuals where you still need to um, adjust or maybe change or shape the actual reality in order to give a proper picture. To complement the crisp and sharpness has to be super clear. Uh, with the Vive Pro, uh, it's super smooth, so we have 120 um, hertz refresh rate. Uh, which means the image refreshes 120 times per second. So even complex animations flow like water, and it's very important for uh, those to get uh, uh, this experience. And not to forget, the field of view is at 120 degrees, which means when I'm looking at an object, um, I really can capture a close to what my horizon of eye, um, the angle of my uh, visual capabilities uh, can give which gives a great, great experience. And not to forget the resolution is what today's uh, best, which is at 5K resolution. 
I'm going to go a little bit deeper on, on the quality uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the pixels and what this can, can give us. And the more pixels we are putting all together, the more, uh, the more clarity, the more sharpness, the more crisp experience. And to show you that in order to push those boundaries, we need to be at the best and we need to give uh, much better than what available in the market today. With this 260% uh, of pixel counts compared to previous generation and compared to what the market is offering, we have taken this example of a simple dashboard that you can see from the left-hand side uh, when, when you're looking at specific details like writings, like numbers, uh, you won't be able to really uh, see it very clearly. And here I'm taking an example of someone who is looking at an object in virtual reality, expecting it similar to our um, uh, normal eye uh, vision, uh, then um, moving at a specific speed where those objects, they don't have much time to look and gaze into, into much details. And if they want to zoom in and look into more details, then they will be losing the specification uh, in detail. These close-ups show how this display can capture the curves and angled lines and text and numbers more clearly to provide um, ultimately a superior and sharper image than other devices. So we know that you, you guys as architects or designs can really bring the best image and draw the best high-end quality with the highest number of pixels. But then when you put it in a virtual reality experience, and here with, the, with, with also our architect, um, Michael can tell you when, when, when those designers uh, put it, it drops a very high um, percentage of those pixels in a way in order to be optimized for the visual experience. And this is where the quality is lost. However, with those um, headsets, with Vive Pro 2, all this is being kept and taken into consideration. Um, not to forget that we work closely with um, the best um, in the world when it comes to graphics, whether it's the um, NVIDIA or AMD, who are, uh, um, who are the leading when it comes to um, GPUs and graphic processing units, and we are we provide the headset that can still use the display uh, screen compression to ensure uh, maximum visuals and maintain backward compatibility. So for you, you don't need to upgrade your hardware um, every time you work on our headset. When it comes to um, the color um, replications, the quality is um, preserved at 98.9% which means all your red, green, and blue is close to real life. I'll give an example in, in exaggerated smartphones that we are using nowadays. You see those super AMOLED screens where you take a picture and then you realize it's not a picture that I can work with if I'm in a professional environment because the colors in production is really exaggerated. Or on a low-end device, the color production is not really close to real life. That's why I cannot really use um, this image or this uh, design. Um, when it comes to comfort, I mentioned at the beginning, um, you'll be spending um, a considerable number of um, hours in, uh, in VR. So you want something uh, super smooth, you want something um, ergonomic, you want something that balances the weight between the forefront and the back end, you want something easy to quick and adjust. And you want something to adjust your um, IPD, which is the distance between the uh, your pupils eyes um, altogether, in order to uh, use the experience. Not to forget, if you're someone who wears glasses, you don't want to remove your glasses, or maybe you, you're comfortable keeping them. So you want all the experience to work flawless. Uh, having said that, compatibility with the uh, accessories that I mentioned about the controllers, the base stations to track the environment and to give you the room scale experience and with other uh, non uh, vibe experiences for you. Um, also, you might sometimes uh, need to move freely in an environment. Um, some um, objects that require uh, quick moves or some people would, would not be comfortable having those cables attached in order to showcase or demonstrate. So we have a wireless adapter for um, a free move around the environment. And not to forget also that um, uh, bringing on board um, uh, precision uh, full body tracking experiences with the use of trackers, where we call them for embodiment experience. So you want to portray um, in engineering, for example, a, a very 
complex tool where you need uh, people to really hold this tool while imitating a, a proper experience. Uh, so you will mount a, a vibe tracker in order to showcase this specifically. We're showing here the, uh, the, the robot dancing, but this is maybe one of the complex um, areas where those objects are moving, but in virtual reality, they show like they are super smooth and super um, easy to deploy. Um, finally, when it comes to those accessories, we've also worked with, with Logitech to bring their own pen. So you can even design using the pen and all this could be uh, migrated and import, exported into virtual reality. Uh, those those uh, nice integrated tools are simple and easy. And uh, with those, you can uh, really benefit from a um, high-end experience. And if you're a designer or art architect, there's nothing better or nicer than using a pen and then immediately uh, import it uh, to another um, uh, environment. Uh, you might be wondering what are the minimum specs of PCs in order to run? Uh, basically, it's a Windows PC. For me, I'm not going into details, but what more important for us to get the 5K resolution, um, highlighted in yellow um, for the graphics, we need the NVIDIA um, uh, 20 series and, and above. And if you don't have it and you're still using um, uh, lower end PCs uh, with the 10th generation, 1060 and above, you can still use it. You don't get the 5K experience, but you can benefit from it. So while designing uh, and optimizing your visuals, uh, you might uh, choose which one, which one you want, and at which level you want to reach. Um, uh, all the rest will be um, along with it. Whenever you fix your graphic card, the minimum processing capability, memory, etc., uh, goes with it. You don't need to go into it. So my message for today is that yes, VR was for gaming, and VR was for um, and still uh, big for gamers, but now we are targeting into um, getting into the business and we've been working on the channel and working uh, with VR to really um, bring it to enterprise and professional users uh, in a very practical way um, and make it reliable as a solution. Uh, Taylor made when it comes to the needs, regardless of what um, um, expertise within the uh, institution or the organization it has in, in, in VR. And not to forget, it has to be scalable, secure, and compliant with whatever infrastructure we are uh, working with. Uh, so for those, um, we are also building solutions that work seamlessly with VR. I'm not going to talk much about it, but if you have any questions um, after that, you can feel free to ask if it's uh, about those solutions. And as I mentioned, different areas and different uh, sectors we focus on, we work with from aerospace, um, public safety, engineering, design, education, automotive. Uh, but for me today, I'm going to focus on two areas, uh, uh, most importantly, which is design visualization and marketing visualization, uh, where um, all this can be uh, focused in order to um, offer um, the best experience in virtual uh, reality uh, and to showcase some of the examples, uh, whether it's in a software that you use in architecture and design or whether it's a, an example how clients or how customers they took these projects in reality. So to start with, um, I'm, um, I have with me um, an example on the softwares that are used. You're much experienced than me when it comes to architecture and design, whether it's Katia from Dassault, whether it's uh, Siemens NX, Autodesk, Gravity, um, Cybernet, uh, uh, PixYZ, uh, PixYZ, and all. Uh, you will see different elements of integration. Now, nowadays, it's becoming much more natural, natural to bring and port and, and get your content into VR and um, uh, redesign and work it, uh, uh, within this uh, concept. Uh, not to forget the main focus areas of the hardware capabilities, whether it's the resolution, uh, the color uh, reproduction, the optics, the tracking, and the display. All this will help you to really migrate properly uh, to your experience. I have with me also an example on um, uh, design and visualization, how Ford uh, was working on designing and working together between different teams in different locations. Um, and you can see they're using the Vive Pro 
headset for their design and users can um, see much details of their models and they can share easily with their colleagues around the world and instantly those colleagues can jump into the conversation um, help in the design uh, bring uh, those models and add to them adjust uh, edit change leave some notes so they can really um, enjoy a proper uh, virtual collaboration experience um, the last one is the marketing visualization, which is an area that's growing more and more uh, nowadays, uh, which again, the same capabilities uh, of the hardware that we offer are extremely um, important. And the same uh, examples of software that I mentioned um, earlier, uh, you can see um, how they were properly integrating them. Here we're talking about, for example, an example uh, of uh, BMW, how it's been able to showcase uh, their cars uh, with, uh, with different colors, uh, with different uh, material, with different finish, um, and they were able to showcase uh, different models um, in, in the real life, in action, in order to um, excite their um, uh, showroom visitors to purchase or maybe to uh, choose their car uh, of the future. Uh, finally, um, Hi, I'm uh, Hamakin I, I have with me a video uh, from um, Zahavid Architects, who a senior associate, who were um, telling us about his experience with virtual reality and how um, uh, virtual reality, especially using uh, HTC Vive product, helped. Um, and um, I will be ending after that uh, with a note uh, that um, big companies and big architecture which, um, design houses are using the technology. Um, not to forget that most of the uh, design softwares available with us, and with you in the market now are fully integrated with virtual reality. Hi, I'm Helmut Kinster, Associate Director and Head of Virtual Reality Group at Saadid Architects. Our group is researching virtual reality in relation to the emerging cybernetic cultures and architectural design. We are also developing experiential real-time based solutions for project evaluation and engagement with our studio stakeholders and clients. HTC has been a long-term partner of our group, helping us to showcase our projects and developing ideas for a new workflow within the professional ecosystem. With HTC's new HMD platforms launched this year, we are excited to experience what the increased resolution and fidelity will offer us. We would expect to gain a deeper understanding of our design simulations and enhancement to the insights of our clients and collaborators. Virtual reality for us as space makers is the best medium to interface with the digital data sphere. Sedit VR Group is committed to leading the development of cybernetic architecture and partners like HTC so enable us to continue uh, to do so. Uh, wait for the questions in the chat box and I can hand over now to uh, Michael. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. Uh, very informative uh, presentation. I'm just going to uh, share my screen. One second. You're welcome, Michael, and good luck. Thank you. Um, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we can see it. Uh, there's still a black box on the... Yeah, now there's nothing. Perfect, we can see it. All right, that's perfect. So, uh, first I would like to uh, thank you, Mohamed, for uh, the introduction and thanks Dr. George for inviting uh, us. Um, and uh, thanks everyone for joining the panel today. Um, my name is Michael Nagib, and I'm a senior architect working with LWK. And uh, for those who never used the VR before, the goal today is to uh, give a bit of information about virtual reality and design and how to start. Uh, I'm sorry, Michael, there is a, there is a bar of uh, Zoom that we see. Yeah, oh, if you I can have. hide that, yeah, if you can hide that, because otherwise it's, yeah, now it's perfect. Um, oh, right. No, wait, there's still a bar in the no, center. I, no, no, it will disappear, I know. Now it, uh, it's oh, Okay, clear, thank huh? you. <laughs> perfect. All right, so the goal today is to uh, share with you how to start 
uh, in VR, what kind of tools you may need. But first, I would like to tell you how we started the VR. And that was almost uh, five or six years ago. Um, in particular, in 2016, when we started doing uh, a spherical uh, 360 rendering. And that was kind of the first impression about an immersive experience. How can you see or visualize a space in, uh, from all angles uh, in 360 form? Uh, we used it for exterior, but also we used it for interior uh, projects. Uh, but the problem is that that was not enough for us. We wanted to experience more, uh, uh, more uh, scalable uh, project. And, and when I'm saying that, I meant that uh, we need to feel the sense of scale, we need to feel the depth. And that's when we used the stereoscopic uh, technique, which is kind of like creating an illusion of depth in an image. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is a very simple technique. We used it in, uh, in 3D Max software. Basically, we have used two cameras, and the distance between those two cameras are simulating the distance between the two eyes, uh, the left and the right eye. And obviously, each camera will give us a slight difference for the same uh, subject. However, when we put these two images together, uh, in, in Samsung uh, Gear VR, that was then uh, more popular. Uh, we can see the picture uh, in 360 form, and also we can feel the sense of depth and uh, uh, sense of scale. However, that was not enough for us. We wanted to explore more. As you see, the girl standing, but not really engaging. There is no interaction between the visuals and the person or the user. So we wanted to see what else we can do. How can we move inside the space? And because of the limitation of the software, we cannot do more than just render more images and create between these, these images a small script and we can teleport between one 360 image to another uh, 360 image. And that was back then was fantastic because uh, uh, for the users of VR, first time usually really impressive, especially when it, uh, when it comes to uh, obviously games, but also when it comes to architecture spaces. And <clears throat> the limitation for, uh, uh, for that kind of uh, setup was basically the sort software we are using. Uh, we were using uh, the conventional rendering uh, software, and you might be familiar with VRA or with Corona that can be used in 3D Max to generate uh, high resolution rendering with fully calculation to the light, material, reflection, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, but where is the challenge? The challenge is if we want to create unlimited number of uh, hotspots inside the scene, we cannot use this uh, uh, rendering engine. Basically, each frame might take us one hour or even more. Uh, for fully uh, render quality. And that's why we uh, decided to shift to uh, real-time rendering uh, software. And the reason is uh, that we want to almost generate 90 image per hour. And this is not really uh, the truth. We actually wanted to create more than that. We wanted to create more than 90 frame or 90 image per minute. When I'm saying 90, frame, I mean render 90 image per minute. And again, that's not uh, very accurate. We, we, we are targeting to do 90 image rendering per second. And that's the minimum uh, uh, kind of uh, standard to run a, a project in VR. And that was very difficult for us to use the conventional rendering application. And that's when we decided that we need to move and shift to real-time rendering engine. And obviously, our first um, uh, our first software we used, and it was very uh, great uh, supporting VR, was Unreal Engine. Uh, but also, beside Unreal Engine, there was other softwares that support uh, real-time rendering, such as Inkscape or Lumia. The good thing about these software is that you can easily uh, uh, use it for uh, importing a 3D file 
from 3D Max, and then you can uh, convert it to, or the content you are creating, you can convert it from 3D Max directly into uh, real-time uh, rendering, and then you can play it or visualize it uh, by the VR uh, headset. Uh, we are using um, uh, most of the time 3D Max, but also I, I know the majority of architects nowadays using SketchUp. So the workflow uh, was a little bit confusing and slightly complicated at the beginning. Uh, in a sense that we have to convert the SketchUp model into 3D Max, and then from 3D Max, we have to import the content into Unreal Engine. And from Unreal Engine, we can uh, use the VR headset. Uh, but thanks to the uh, Unreal team, they have created for us a plugin that allowed users directly from SketchUp, they can convert their model or their data into Unreal and also directly from uh, 3D Max uh, to Unreal. And that obviously saved uh, a lot of time. And when I'm saying that, I'm almost saying four or five days of work can be done in a few hours. So one of the also very interesting tools that V-Ray provided, uh, for a lot of users, V-Ray is very common and a lot of people get more comfortable using it. Uh, but it doesn't uh, work in Unreal. And the good thing that Unreal uh, and V-Ray collaborated and they created a plugin for the users who like the V-Ray quality and you can use it directly for rendering inside Unreal Engine. And then you can act, run the project or play the project using the VR uh, headset. Uh, now I'm going to show you a product that a project we have done here uh, in our office. And uh, we have used SketchUp uh, uh, for the design. And we have used the Inkscape software for visualizing the uh, project. So let's go there. So as you see, uh, this is the project in SketchUp. Uh, it's a project we have done uh, uh, for Abu Dhabi port. Uh, it's a ferry terminal. And one of the challenges, one of the challenges in that project was the canopy that we have created. We want to really experience how it feels when you are standing beneath the canopy. Is it too high? Is it too close to the human? Um, uh, and that's where uh, VR was very handy. You can see here now the view uh, inside the VR. Obviously, now you can freely teleport from a spot to another and visualize the space in a more uh, human scale. Now also gonna take you up to see the second floor. And the good thing about the VR that you can see the full colors, the materials, but also you can engage more is that you can change on the spot the materials the colors even the sun angle for, for example here i'm going to show you that you can change the time on the day and accordingly you can see the shadow cast is different on the floor so that's an example of how, uh, how it's very easy and almost one click you can convert the SketchUp model uh, into VR. Uh, we, we have used the HTC Vive uh, in that uh, project. Um, and, and for other projects also, we found that uh, the tracking system is very uh, important and it really help us that not only navigate uh, with the teleport, uh, tool, but we can physically walk inside the space. We can knee down and look uh, closer to the floor finish uh, or to the walls. And this kind of uh, engaging was really uh, important for us as designers. So, as you know, we traditionally used to communicate our ideas with clients in, in very limited uh, forms. Either it's an uh, animation or we use like 3D rendering. Also, we can use like 3D models or mockups. 
But using the VR or using the uh, real-time rendering engine, it's actually allowed us to do much more. So in the next example, I'm going to show you some of the uh, features or some of the tools that can help you to communicate your idea. The first and the most important thing is the sense of scale. You can, uh, you can really feel uh, the scale of the project. Uh, one of the examples we were designing a canopy, and it, it feels right when you see it in the flat screen, but once you look at it in the VR, you might feel it's too bulky or you might feel it requires some refinements. And that really helped architects uh, to validate and improve the design. The other thing that we manage not only to give uh, our uh, clients uh, the ability to walk around, but we managed to script uh, uh, the, the tour for them. So rather than uh, he can walk around using the teleport, we can actually make the VR camera move around and show him the project the way we want to uh, preview it. And also the VR allowed the users to pre-save some hotspots in the project. It's very similar to when you choose four or five cameras to, uh, to communicate your idea. So, but instead of it's one directional camera, it's 360 uh, view. And obviously, as you've seen earlier, the, the light scenario from day to night, and that allow also uh, uh, designers to uh, experience the, the lighting design for their projects. And one of the most important things is also the design option. You can change materials, colors, uh, and you can do a lot of mix and match uh, with your product on the spot. And finally, a screen capture, which is also a very good tool to uh, save some of the shots that requires further uh, uh, modifications or discussions later on uh, in the VR. So I'm going to show you some of these tools in one of the products that we uh, developed using Unreal. So as you see here in this product, uh, we have more control, uh, for example, for physics, you can add some moving assets in your scene. We can shift between the day and night scenario. If in an Unreal Engine, it allows you to add the ambient sound that you want. And that create more immersive uh, kind of experience. And you can see here clearly the motion tracking. You can literally go down on your knee and see the design from a different perspective which is something very useful and unique. So moving between pre-saved locations also is a very useful tool. And changing the finishes for your design on the spot is really helping to speed up the approval process. And finally, you can see here, if you want to uh, save a screen capture for a view you like, you can just use a screen capture mode and it saves the image directly into your hard drive. And, and thank you very much. That's uh, my side. And I'm looking forward to hear uh, any of your questions. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. And thank you so much, uh, Daniel, for the uh, informative presentations we have.
we do have some questions that we'd like to uh, start with start with we we have also some messages that they came in thanking you both for the uh, for the presentations so um, maybe we can start with uh, with daniel first with um with a few questions so um can you tell us daniel if there is any any of the latest technologies that are still in the in the making still in the pipeline that you'll be um, announcing soon, if nothing uh, confidential, of course. If you can share with us any of the ideas that you're about to announce, maybe. Uh, uh, as you know, I mean, with HCC, we're, we're always innovating and bringing new products to market. Um, at the beginning, I mentioned that uh, we started with gaming, then we went into, uh, we, we added the enterprise sector, and now we're catering both B2C and B2B. And, Design and, and visualization is one of the important uh, sectors. Mm, uh, the future is heading into lighter headsets, smaller headsets, higher graphics, higher capabilities. And since the whole IT also future development is going into cloud, we are working also on cloud uh, uh, based technologies. So the future will be slimmer headsets, lighter headsets, and um, all the rendering and all the graphics being cooked at the cloud level pushed to the headset. Um, not to forget that I mentioned at the beginning that we have the AIO, which is the all-in-one, which is one category by itself. The PCVR, which is split into the physical tracking uh, um, accessories supporting the tracking experience and room scale. And the third one under PCVR is the inside-out tracking. Um, I would say that stay tuned. Uh, we have also Jitex coming in. We have Design Week um, coming in. Uh, we have something uh, in the making that would be a new category. Uh, but for now, I cannot disclose more. Than yeah, this. but maybe, maybe, maybe the the other question would be um, being, of course, with in a school of architecture, interior design, and and uh, visual communications. To which level do you do you co collaborate? To which level do you take ideas from architects or team designers while you are developing developing? So do, do you hold, do you set some meetings to know their their opinions and what uh, technology you're working with, their ideas, what they want, what are they looking forward? So you would develop your your tools accordingly. Um, Professor Mohanad, uh, your question is very important. We 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 not only meet with them, sit with them, understand what they're doing. We also give them access um, under NDA to our um, early development uh, products uh, so they can work closely with us on identifying um, the needs and the requirements within their um, sector and their industry. So we can cater this um, and, and take it into high consideration while we're developing our hardware and product. And you've seen the example with the um, Zaha Hadid architecture firm. These are one of also the top um, architecture firm that we work closely and where we share our products at early stages and we get uh, very constructive feedback with them. That's that's interesting. We have we have a, a question here. Um, another question would be, would it be great to see the technology used to create uh, massive words at art installations? Yeah, and maybe sold uh, NFTs for people's home headsets. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is this is happening. It started now with NFTs, with the metaverse. Uh, VR and XR are the um, key um, drivers and uh, main tools to uh, design the metaverse. Uh, just for those who don't know what the metaverse are uh, is and what NFTs is, um, in simple English um, explanation, the metaverse is the, is the new... Uh, global internet world. We were on the WWG World Wide Web where we used to browse internet through uh, a, uh, a browser. And now it's going into a multi-dimensional universe and where the whole uh, web and where the whole internet is going, where you can have everything created in 3D, in, in different design models, and in VR, in AR, and all this using um, even 5G technologies. And NFTs are the elements that are in this virtual space where people are starting now to create, uh, trade, buy, sell. Uh, these could be elements like uh, 
like physical elements. I have a, a nice poster from uh, signed by my favorite uh, football player. Um, I can take a picture of it or I can redesign it and sell it, or I can even place it over there and sell the physical one. So all these are now coming in together. Yeah, so talking about ideas, also get back to that, talking about ideas in the future. Do you think at some point we'll be able to have all, all in one? I mean, a headset that can do it. I know that it's almost next to impossible, but a headset that would have everything without PC and then you can promote and go and work whatever, on, on whatever you, you want to do with uh, having all in one. I, I mean, uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't say it will not happen. I'm very confident that there are stuff that uh, our companies are working on. We've seen the Raven and Facebook um, glasses just announced a couple of days ago. It has its own limitations, it has its own purposes, but you can see the improvement. We've seen companies working on lenses where those lenses, they have a chip where it connects to 5G and Wi-Fi, and then it can render everything on just the basic lens of the eye. So there are a lot of uh, work um, in the process. I, I see we are in the beginning, we didn't reach a stage where it's now mass and much more mature, but I cannot say that uh, the things with, uh, in our hands are very limited. They are very powerful. I mean, we've seen with the, with Michael a great, great simulation of this apartment. I mean, um, I, I know people living in, living in busy cities where they go and see the apartment uh, at 7 p.m. after they're working hours. They're happy with it, but they haven't seen it um, at 12 midday where the sun is uh, extremely uh, warm and hot, where the noise of some or of a train passing by could be. So all these elements in his design, Michael was able to bring to life and play the day, night, the time. Everything was immersive into it. Uh, so all these are elements that are uh, uh, helping the end customer at the end of the day. And with the mindset and creativity of architects and design, we are seeing amazing stuff. Absolutely, for I, I I do agree with this. Um, thank you, Daniel. Going to uh, maybe Michael now um, with the uh, with all of the incredible work he showed us, Michael. Um, and I think our, our the majority of, of the audience we have today from architecture school. So um, I think they were interested, I'm sure, with the, with what you showed us. Uh, a question would be: What advice would you give to the students if they want to work and visualize their projects? using VR, what is the software or the platform that they can start with? And um, it's, it has a friendly interface, um, a software that you would, you would uh, recommend to start visualizing and playing with VR uh, using it. So if you ask me the same question, Mohammed, like uh, four or five years ago, uh, it would be a tough question because uh, back then, uh, there's still all the softwares are trying to catch up with uh, real-time rendering engines uh, popular like Unreal. Uh, but now uh, a lot of softwares, especially uh, uh, SketchUp and 3D Max, uh, they are adapting one button to VR. So you don't have to do uh, more than just connecting your headset, finish your project, and then and under one press, you can convert or you can move all your product into uh, the virtual uh, world. Uh, the, one of the very uh, good uh, uh, softwares also that work with SketchUp is Inkscape, uh, which is a real-time rendering also engine. And uh, it's not only uh, can uh, create for you or run for you your project in VR, but it can package the whole project into uh, a, a, an EXE format, which is a format can be played on any other uh, computer without any special software. And that allows you basically to send the whole product to your client. And they can, uh, if they have also uh, the VR headset, they can run it and play it and they can, uh, they can visualize it from their side and give comments back. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, I, I think the uh, interesting part of also and the powerful part of, uh, of virtual reality where you get to experience the scale of the space and that this would be a very powerful tool to design and sense the scale of the space. But we have seen that on the scale of the designer, the architect. But can we, can we see that or is it possible to get the client involved in that experience? 
uh, not only the experience of an architect knowing the scale, but to which level can you integrate the, the client in the process? So because, because of the ease of producing uh, now all, the, all our work in, in VR, uh, some of our meetings, we actually uh, take our kit and go to the client side. Uh, obviously, uh, when, 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 uh, when Daniel showed today some of the new, uh, new uh, head, headsets, uh, some of them doesn't require really uh, much time to set up. Uh, just a few minutes and you have uh, your full uh, VR studio ready and the client can uh, on the spot visualize his project, give us comments. Uh, for instance, the project we did for Abu Dhabi Ports team, uh, we, we did this exercise, we went to their office, we showed them the whole project. Uh, they give us really very uh, useful feedback uh, based on their knowledge. Uh, and and uh, and that was uh, almost a shortcut, uh, rather than doing a lot of rendering or a lot of uh, videos uh, that not necessarily communicate straight uh, the idea. So yeah, it is doable, and we 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 start engaging uh, in a lot of projects uh, with our client uh, using the VR. So so um, Michael, you, you mentioned that you have to take to take your tools and go to the client. This, this maybe gives me an idea that not everyone has or working with, with a VR for now. Do you, see, do you see the future have, I mean, do you see the future as everyone working in the architectural field, um, working and integrating virtual reality in the design? So at that point, maybe we will have, uh, a, I mean, an, an online interaction and, and communication. Yes. So surprisingly, Mohammed, every time we make a visit to any of our clients, the first thing they ask for is uh, how easy to make our own uh, VR hub or VR studio in our company and uh, or in our business. And that, that didn't happen only from one side, it actually happens a lot. So I think it's just about uh, if they experience the VR correct and if they understand the value of it, you don't have to promote it. They will come back and ask you. We, we actually need uh, to have our own setup uh, in-house. And then later on the communication, we just do emails. We don't have to ourselves go and present it. We're just sharing the files and we can run it. There. And th that's why, as Daniel said, we are really now in a very early stage. But once the, once the tool become uh, uh, approachable and uh, smaller, I'm sure that it will be within each, uh, each organization. Interesting. Um, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Daniel. I think that's, that's all from my side. George, uh, if you, know, you don't you mind, yes, I have, I have one thing. First, thank you so much, Daniel, and thank you so much, Michael, for this very interesting you know, and informative uh, presentation. You know, I, the, the educator in me here is, is kicking, and, and, and I, I would like to add just uh, one very important aspect is a lot of people who are not familiar with virtual reality. They usually look at our screens, like today we're looking at a screen and we're all experiencing the screen uh, experience and they really don't get it. They said, okay, why are you pushing into this? I mean, it's very similar. You just have a, a wider field of view uh, effect. So it's very important that, you know, I always say to my student, you know, uh, in class, the screen space is extremely different from the virtual void, from the virtual reality experience. And the virtual reality experience is the closest to reality than any other uh, experience that you have or you can have, whether you're doing a design process or you're doing you know, a, a final outcome that you usually share with the, with the client or you share with other stakeholders. So I, I just wanted to highlight on that, that even people today who are watching us and seeing that it's screen, it is not a screen. You have to try the virtual reality to really understand that you are in a virtual void where you can actually create anything you want. The, the additional thing that I would also like to add is, you know, to Michael, to augment what Michael said, there's a lot of softwares out there now they're moving to virtual reality. I mean, uh, he mentioned SketchUp is a fantastic tool. Even they have an extension in SketchUp that is VR Sketch, which is another fantastic tool that allows you to design inside virtual reality. And you can export 
using SketchUp, you can export any of these files to any any software, whether Enscape, whether Twinmotion, uh, whether any other type that would accommodate virtual reality. And there are a lot of fantastic tools out there. I mean, I think that the new generation or the next generation are extremely fortunate and lucky to have this technology. I mean, you know, when I used to design, I used to use pen and then paper, and and I used to, you know, try to show whether my professors or the client, you know, what is the um, uh, how to explain my ideas now it's very easy it's super uh, convenient to actually just produce it in a virtual world and then show it on the spot to your professor or to the client or stakeholder yeah exactly i mean we, we say at hcc seeing is believing when yeah, it comes yeah. to reality <laughs> and here um, i have dr david who's also attending from an line from uh, higher college of technology he's he's adding and saying it's like uh, you're teaching someone scuba diving without um, uh, getting them to dive. So again, it's the same analogy. Um, and also we have Chela um, here, not a lot, maybe the last comment for today. Thanks, Michael. Great to see how you have used HTC headset to um, um, unravel the here we go, the, the depth of using VR technology in um, design and architecture. Um, I think that's all of, uh, of from our side and the question that they came in. I think the Q&A session after the, um, the talk was also as informative as the talk itself. Thank you so much again, Daniel. And thank you again, Michael, for joining us. Um, I, and thank, thanks for everyone who joined in. And that was the first uh, great webinar uh, for fall 2021. And hopefully we'll, we'll be seeing you in two weeks time for the next uh, webinar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, George, and see you. Have a good day and see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.